Got an exam question here about unsaturated aldehydes and alcohols. So if you wanted to have a go at this first, I've put the link to the question in the description of the video. So download, have a go, and then play on when you're ready for the answers. So part A, we've got to outline the reaction mechanism for um, the reaction of this substance here with hydrogen bromide. Obviously there's two possible products because the hydrogen can either add there or there. So I'll show both. Okay, so we've got a dipole on the HBr molecule due to the difference in electronegativity. And a pair of electrons from the pi bond are going to be attracted to the slightly positive hydrogen. And that's going to repel the pair of electrons in the HBr bond completely onto the bromine. And it'll break that bond by heterolytic fission. So I'll just do two arrows to show the two different uh, products that can form. Okay, so if we look at the top one first, you can see that the um, hydrogen has gone here. So that leaves a positive charge on this carbon. So the Br would become a Br minus ion. I'm showing that lone pair because I'm going to use it to draw the curly arrow from to the C plus. So obviously that's going to generate this product here. And if we look at the lower one now, so you can see I've put the hydrogen on this carbon, so that one there. Again, we'll get a Br minus ion and do the same as before. Pair of electrons from the lone pair attracted to the C plus, and that's going to generate this product here. Next part of the question, explain why one of the organic products forms in a much greater quantity than the other organic product. Well, it's all to do with the stability of the carbocations. So these things here. So we'll just work out what kind of carbocations we've got. So it's all to do with how many carbon atoms are bonded directly to the carbon with the positive charge. So we've got two carbons directly bonded to that one. So that is a secondary carbocation. Whereas this carbocation here, you can see the C plus has one, two, three carbon groups attached. So this is a tertiary carbocation. Now because tertiary carbocations are the most stable of the two we've got in this question, we're going to get more of this product forming than this one. So I'll just write that up at the bottom there. Part B now, we've got to describe how the observations from a chemical test would distinguish between geraniol and citronellal. So we've got to identify functional groups. Well, you can see they're both um, alkene, they've got an alkene group in them. So we couldn't use the bromine water test because they would both decolorize it. This is a primary alcohol, whereas this is an aldehyde. So if we added Tollens reagent to both, only the aldehyde, only citronellal, would generate the silver mirror. You'll see I've given the alternative name there for Tollens reagent, ammoniacal silver nitrate. Next part, we've got to work out the molecular formula of geraniol. So just count all the carbons, the hydrogens and the oxygens, and group them together. Don't put the OH group on its own because that's not molecular formula. C10, H18, O. Explain why geraniol and citronella are structural isomers of each other. Literally, just got to give the definition. So you just need to say they've got the same molecular formula, but different structural formula. And likewise, for the next part, we've just got to give the definition for stereoisomerism. So we'd need to say this. So that's the same structural formula, but a different spatial arrangement of the atoms. Last part of the question, explain the types of stereoisomerism shown by both of these compounds. Got to refer to the numbered carbon atoms and draw diagrams. So I'm going to do the uh, first bullet point first. So geraniol, it shows EZ isomerism, and that's because of this carbon carbon double bond here. This one can't show EZ because we've got two identical groups on carbon 7. So EZ not possible across this double bond, but it is here because um, you've got a hydrogen a CH2OH group on that carbon, methyl group, and then this R group, we'll call it, um, 
as well. So you can see I've written there geronial shows EZ isomerism and that's because each carbon of the double bond between C2 and C3 has a different atom or group attached. Might as well just say what, which one it is. Um, so this is the priority group on carbon 2. So you can see that's pointing up. The priority group on carbon number 3 is all of that. So you can see that's pointing in the opposite direction. So this is the E form that's been drawn. So obviously we're going to have to draw the Z form um, when we do the second bullet point. Moving on to citronellal now, this shows optical isomerism because carbon 3 has four different groups attached. So we've got a methyl group, a hydrogen that's obviously not shown in the skeletal formula. We've got a CH2, CHO group, and we've got this big R group. And for the diagram, I'm just going to show this is an R group. That's perfectly fine to do that. So we can see I've said citronellal shows optical isomerism. C3 has four different groups attached. So that carbon there is a chiral centre. So if we remember, it was the E form that had been shown um, in the question. So we need to draw the Z form. Why is it Z? Because the priority groups are on the same side of the carbon-carbon double bond. So this one here is the Z form. Okay, so for the citronellal stereoisomers, we've got to draw the 3D diagrams of the optical isomers. So I've always start like this, draw an empty tetrahedron around your chiral center. So if we go up to the chiral center there in the diagram, so what have we got on there? We've got a methyl group and a hydrogen, a CH2, CHO group, and we're going to call this whole thing here, I'll just highlight in a different color, all of that, I'm just going to call R on my diagram. So let's put the R there, which means it has to go there on the mirror image. Let's put the CH2CHO on the top, CH2CHO on the top of the other one. So let's put um, CH3 there, which means the CH3 has to go there. Just be careful with your connectivity there. And then finally, we'll put the hydrogen on the wedge, and that will be absolutely fine. 